You might think that Queen Elizabeth II has fake power, but that woman owns every swan in the Thames, so eat your words. Now, the Queen does have a certain number of quirky powers, like the fact that she owns all of the dolphins in British waters, technically, and also she can drive without a driver's license. The days of royal decree are gone, but that doesn't mean that her influence is solely limited to showing up to events and waving in monochromatic outfits. First of all, she has an important symbolic role as the head of state of the United Kingdom's constitutional monarchy. She also has a certain amount of technical powers that she chooses not to exercise for very good reasons. This is something known as the royal prerogative. So let's talk about one of those powers, which is something called the royal assent. Now, bills are created at this point by the House of Commons and the House of Lords. That's who actually does the governing of the United Kingdom. But technically, a bill only becomes law with something called royal assent from the Queen. That means that effectively, she technically could veto these bills by withholding her royal assent. Now, the last monarch to actually do that was Queen Anne in 1708. Queen Elizabeth II's role in Parliament at this point is largely opening it every year and wearing the big fancy state crown and the ermine robes and doing the whole ceremony. And if she actually were to withhold royal assent on one of these bills, it would likely immediately trigger a constitutional crisis, Parliament would be obliged to step in, and it would not be very good for the monarchy's continued existence. The Queen is also the Commander-in-Chief. She technically commands all the soldiers within the British Armed Forces. She could also, if she really wanted to, command the troops to do something like call in an airstrike. However, if she did call in an airstrike, the government would presumably stop that. She generally delegates these responsibilities to the Prime Minister or the Secretary of State for Defense. But she alone has the power to declare war in the United Kingdom. The last monarch to actually declare war in the United Kingdom was her father, King George VI. So maybe you're sensing a theme here. There's a number of things she can technically do, but she actually can't because again, total constitutional crisis. So then there's a sort of a general grab bag of other powers she has over citizens. She can create knights and dames. She can pardon criminals. She can appoint ministers to the crown, although the prime minister can do that too. She cannot be prosecuted. And she's also the head of the Church of England. The queen does have real power, but she's not really trying to use it to do something like get away with murder. She's 93. She doesn't really like to get overtly political. She mostly wants to stomp around Balmoral in her galore at this point. But the queen is able to have a bagpiper play in the wee hours of every single morning to wake her up, and no one has overthrown her yet for doing that. And that, my friends, is real power.